Hello and welcome to another video and another video featuring the Honda Transup. I've had this bike now for a couple of weeks. Uh, Honda were good enough to lend me another one and this has got a few choice extras. Now I did make some notes so I don't get it wrong. So we have the comfort pack which includes the uh, upper and lower wind effectors, flectors. So you've got this one here. You've got comfort foot pegs for the pillion. Uh, we've got the tank bag as well and it's got a nice quick release system so that when you fill up it's uh, easy access. We've got a 12 volt socket. So this bike also has a top box and that is matched to the key with the bike. It's got an inner bag as well. This touring screen which is 75 millimeters higher than the standard screen so we'll test out on the uh, motorway in a bit. Also this bike comes with the quick shifter, up and down quick shifter and what I really like about the quick shifter on this bike you can actually change the settings for up and down. So you've got soft, medium, hard. If I'm a bit tired I'm soft and in the morning I usually like hard. <laughs> that's pretty cool because most quick shifters you can't adjust them they just put them on the bike the OEM ones and that's it you're good to go but this one you can actually change it and fiddle around with it. In this video I'm essentially going to talk about the Transup once again um, but from the point of view that I've ridden it for a couple of weeks now I've done commuting I haven't taken this one off-road because I did that on the last bike but I know what it's like sounds good. Totally stock can sounds pretty nice actually it doesn't look nice but it does sound nice and in this uh, black color that headlight is a little bit disappointing still but from the side i think it looks really nice the ross white uh, colorway is really lovely it's like that tri-color gold wheels right let's throw our leg over and get going just have a little bit of a chat about the uh, trans up and at the end of the video i will let you know what i think about this versus the Suzuki V-Strom DE, not the RE, the DE because of the 21 inch front wheel. Let's, let's, co let's compare like for like. Fiddle with me, dude. Oh, this bike is rather tall. Seat height is 850mm and I'm 5'8 with a 30 inch inseam. So it's not too bad in most situations but there is the odd occasion where I come to a stop and there's like a bit of a camber or, or if the road surface is a bit typically English then uh, it can be a bit tall but because it's actually quite a lightweight 280 kilograms wet it's not so bad now the roads are super wet today so we can't go banzai crazy unfortunately yeah so living with the uh, Transup for two weeks what's it been like uh, let's talk about comfort and ergos then I found the seat to be rather nice um, not too soft because I find sometimes if a seat is too soft I struggle with it on a uh, longer ride but this seems to be in the sweet spot for me personally uh, the longest ride I did on this was two hours and towards the end of that I kind of was getting a little bit sore my knees were right because it's got a fairly good angle for your dangle but uh, yeah in terms of actual sort of upper body lower body position everything is good you've got lovely wide bars for good leverage <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> yeah, the um, ergos are pretty good for this bike. It's um, even off road. I found it. Uh, you know, the, the foot peg position, the bars, while not super high, so you were leaning down a little bit, which makes you lean over the front. It wasn't too bad. It's kind of a sweet spot for what this bike is designed to do, which is uh, long distance touring, right? And uh, yeah, I think not too bad. I mean, who's going to really want to ride longer than two hours anyway without a break? Not many of us, I fear. No real issues in terms of comfort. Oh, that's the best place to park, isn't it? What are you doing? Dropping his old lady off. Yeah, all in a while goes comfort. Nothing really to complain about. The engine is, I think it's brilliant. And it's uh, why I love the Hornet so much. <laughs> it just sounds great and it actually likes to rev out quite a lot I'm in standard mode at the moment just because it's a little bit wet let's go sport mode do have to be a bit careful <laughs> yeah it's fun right, I'm gonna go back to standard give myself a little bit of extra precautionary rider aids but yeah the engine has got a lovely noise to it just makes it fun to wind on the throttle 
<laughs> and they seem to have, oh, a bit bouncy. Yeah, they seem to have kind of done uh, the, the sound so that it bounces back towards the rider and it just does make me smile quite a lot. Thank you, lady. Mm. Hello. It doesn't seem to be super revy low down, but it's got the added benefit that it likes to rev and still make quite good power higher up in the RPMs. And that's where I feel like the V-Strom kind of starts to run out of puff, whereas this seems to just want to keep going. So I do think the two engines are slightly different in terms of what they deliver. And the Suzuki seems to have a bit more immediate punch from the off. But yes, engine is just a lovely, fun little lump. And uh, I do hope that we see that in more bikes in the future. Suspension, now this has got Showa separate function fork, cartridge uh, upside down forks, 43 mil. And for the most part, they do everything pretty well. The only kind of issues I found that on the really bumpy off-road stuff, you start to run out of travel quite quickly. They're 200 mil travel at the front and 190 at the rear. Now the rear only has preload adjustment, as does the front. And what I found is on sort of the bumpier roads, the rear does start to pogo a fair bit, sort of get the bike out of shape when you really push on. So it would have been nice to have some rebound damping. So, you know, off-road or super bumpy roads, the suspension still plush, but it's only when you really sort of ask a lot of the bike that you start to run out of travel. I've bottomed the bike out a couple of times doing the off-road stuff. Suspension on the road is actually pretty good. Slightly firmer setup than the Suzuki out of the crate. Now I know you can adjust the preload front and rear, but I'm just talking about out of the crate. Both bikes, I find the Suzuki very, very soft, which I really noticed on the road. Massive amounts of weight transfer when you slam on the anchors or even break slightly. Whereas this, this bike just seems to have a bit more resilience to the uh, the diving. Yeah, I think for the road, the Transalp is absolutely in the sweet spot in terms of a bike that's got a 21 inch front wheel. Uh, 21 inch front wheels, they give less rolling resistance, so they're better at rolling over undulating terrain. But that does mean sometimes when you're really tipping a bike in, it can start to feel a little bit vague at the front or it washes out. We've got a bit of flooding, but that is okay, I think. We're on an adventure bike after all. Right, let's just see what happens with the the van. Oh, this is this is quite deep. For yeah, for a 21 incher, hey, it does handle pretty well. It's only when you get on like tight roundabouts and stuff you kind of feel a little bit like, oh, not sure what that front is doing. But I'm talking about you have to be pretty aggressive and throw it around. Brakes are very good. Very surprised by those because they are only twin piston uh, axial mounted calipers. But they do, they do stop you quite nicely. Whee! <laughs> oh, the traction control wasn't sure what was going on there. Yeah, so front and back brakes, pretty decent. Nothing else to report really. Quite a nice feel actually from the front brake. Not the most bite of course, but you know, it, uh, it's better than I thought it would be. Which is always a bonus. So we're just going to go onto the dual carriageway up here and we can see what the uh, wind wind blast or wind protection is like. Because you're going to, let's be honest, if you're going to buy this bike, you need to jump on a motorway, aren't you, at some point? I'm hoping with that taller screen it will be a lot better than the standard screen, which I didn't think was tall enough. And the added protection from those little deflectors should hopefully offer some decent wind protection. Oh, she just sounds so good when you open her up. Okay, so 70 miles an hour, there or thereabouts. The only wind blast or buffeting I'm getting is like out on my forearms here. Everywhere else is actually pretty protected. So it seems that that tall screen with those deflectors is doing a really good job. Now, if you're taller than me, I'm only five foot eight. If you're sort of like six foot, you might start yeah see that's quite noisy but if I sit back down normally everything is good again so that does depend on your height which is why it's always really difficult for me to advise you guys whether a bike is going to be good for you or not because I am the height and weight that I am and I don't know what height and weight you are and I can't you know people are, have longer body bodies and short legs or short legs and 
or long legs or short bodies you know it's all we're all different is what I'm trying to say in a really faffy way <laughs> we're all different and the best way to figure out if a bike works for you is to go and test ride it I can only give you my opinion based on my own experiences but yeah with this touring screen and de those deflectors that does seem to work quite well for me and to the point where I think I would have to have those on this bike certainly as this would be a bike that I would go touring on now we have to address the elephant in the room which is the lack of cruise control this uh, so Honda and Suzuki have both sort of, sort of um, thought you know what we're not going to offer cruise control on our middleweight adventure bikes and it seems like they're kind of looking at each other to see who blinks first and neither of them want to do it I would just say I could guess that this is going to happen at some point in the life of this bike that we will start to see stuff like cruise control and other little mid-life upgrades because it's got the ride-by-wire throttle system so it wouldn't be too much of a stretch to get that system in there it's already got like the capability to do it so I do expect either the base price of the bike would go up if they add it on or you'd have to have it as an option which is what I think Honda would choose to do. Um, there is another issue that I want to address and that's the tubed tyres. Now I understand tubed tyres may be more geared towards off-road riding. I imagine changing a, a tube tyre, I've never done it on a motorcycle, I imagine that's a right faff because you know you can plug a tubeless tyre and when you've got bikes like the £7,000 Moto Marini X Cape that comes with tubed tyres as standard I really don't understand why the likes of Honda and Suzuki aren't doing it and again I'm sure a midlife update of this bike is going to fix that issue we'll see tubeless spoked wheels in the future other than those two caveats so lack of cruise control and tubed tires I don't really have anything negative to say okay we could mention the switch gear is a little bit more faffy than the Suzuki um, but what I do like is you've got the one mode button which just instantly changes the mode the riding mode so you know it's an instant thing you don't have to go into any menu or press up and down it's instantaneous which is nice that's a really well thought out feature there the actual menu system on this and the dash are a little bit more complex and there's quite a lot going on on this dash you've got all those little circles with the power and the braking and the traction and it's just a little bit more fiddly and faffy but having lived with a hornet for quite a while now i'm totally used to it it's not an issue for me but it might be an issue for new riders so that is something that uh, might put a new rider off when you look at the likes of the much simpler Suzuki Dash you know I'm really nitpicking here these are minor minor issues because the core of this bike which is you know the engine the chassis how it handles how it performs it's all brilliant both this and the Suzuki V-Strom DE are absolutely fantastic so yeah electronics on this you've got all the electronics you ever want you've got different riding modes five different riding modes you've got a user mode you can fiddle around with it you've got gravel mode you've got rain sport standard mode you can really go to town and fiddle around with it you can turn off the abs you can turn off the traction control and hoik wheelies if you want which you really can do on this bike <laughs> it is quite fun second gear yank it up and it'll it'll come up nicely led lights all over standard it comes with the usb-c socket under the seat now i don't know how useful that is but i guess they the idea there is that they want you to connect your phone up to the bike or something i don't know but um, yeah usb c under the seat i guess it's better than nothing but if you want that 12 volt thing that's that's an added extra in in one of the packs i've forgotten which one now <laughs> comfort pack i think so yeah overall though it's a cracking machine it's a lovely bit of kit and it's the sort of bike i would just i want to get on if i need to go and do a ride anywhere like to work to go and do anything i want to jump on this if i want to have a really gnarly weekend blast i'll probably pick something else but as a one bike that does it all, you can't really go wrong with this bike. It, it performs extremely well. And even with that 21 inch front wheel, it doesn't handle too badly. So let's talk about this versus the V-Strom 800DE. I have mentioned it throughout this video, I know. But which would I buy and why if I had the choice? My pick would be the Honda Transalp. And that's for a couple of reasons. One. I don't do too much off-road stuff so I would pick the bike that is a, is a slightly better bike on road out of the crate and what do I mean by that in that the suspension on the Suzuki just seems ever so soft and not quite as well balanced on the road the caveat to that being that you can 
fettle with the suspension a lot more on the Suzuki and probably get it into a, a better place than it is as standard. But out of the crate, this bike, this Honda Transalp is just fantastic. Number two, I like how this bike handles with a pillion. Now I take my lady on the back every now and again, not too often, but I've even found that I don't really need to touch the preload at the back, which is just as well, because you need to get your C-spanners out, which is a bit of a faff. Um, whereas the Suzuki, even though it's easier, because you've got a remote, pre uh, you put your teeth in, Dan, a remote preload adjuster, there we go, <laughs> Um, so you can dial up preload. I found that the bike, because of the overall softer suspension, it just sort of like, it seemed to have a lot more going on when you're riding, whereas this bike just seems to be a bit more, a bit more settled on the road. Now granted, I think the Suzuki, no, I know the Suzuki is better off-road for sure. So if that's more of your focus, then get the Suzuki. But on road, for me, I think this, the Honda handles just a little bit tighter, a little bit better, a little bit more sure-footed. And that's just my opinion, that's just what I prefer. You may you may think differently, you may have experienced differently, but you know, this is my experience. And hey, it's my video, so there. <laughs> uh, number three, I prefer the engine on the Transalp. Uh, it makes a bit more power in the mid, and I have managed to do some pretty massive wheelies on this bike. I didn't know how deep that was. That is also what she said. <laughs> Yeah, so I think the engine is just a little bit more fun on the Honda. I will give the Suzuki this, that the immediate power on the V-Strom is quite something in that you turn the traction control off, it really is quite something. <laughs> it will 12 o'clock wheelie rather fast. Um, but yeah, I just prefer the sort of higher ribbing nature and a bit more top end power of the Honda Transart. That's just me. Uh, the Suzuki doesn't sound bad, but I think this sounds better. That might not be an issue because, let's be honest, we'll probably get an exhaust can for whatever bike you're going to buy anyway. I will give you some good points for the Suzuki. I think it looks better overall. We are quite deep in the water. Yeah, I think the Suzuki looks better, for sure. And as I already said, the Suzuki is better off-road. But... Uh, I don't really do all that much off-road stuff, to be honest. Oh, my feet are soaking wet. Um, oh, well, at least I'll test these boots. They're meant to be waterproof, we'll see. Uh, the Honda is about, what is it now? About 12, 12 kilos lighter, and I think you can feel that. I do think you can feel the difference in, in that it's just a little bit more nimble, whereas the Suzuki is 230, whereas this is 208. So yeah, oh, it's a bit more than that, isn't it? What is that, 20? 22 kilos. Um, so if that's a, a concern to you, then go for the, the Honda, which is the lighter machine. So yeah, that's been this video, this long, waffly, vloggy style video, essentially. I prefer the Transalp, but that's not to say that the Suzuki is bad, because it really isn't. They are both bloody excellent bikes. They will do everything you ask of them, but my personal preference is the Honda. That is, that, that's it. So that will probably cover this video. If you've got any questions about either the Honda Transalp or the Suzuki V-Strom 800 DE, let me know in the comments and I will try to answer you as soon as I can. If you do go out today, ride safely, but remember to have fun, of course. Otherwise, what is the point? And until next time, you take care. Peace. I love the Transalp. Oh, that's fun. I have a good time. <laughs>